I'm going to show you three, what I think are really quite useful CAS calculator tips on the TI Inspire. The first one is the domain function for finding the domain of a function. Uh, so here we have 1 minus sec x plus pi on 4. So all we need to do is type in uh, on the CAS calculator domain. You can find it in the catalog um, or you can just type in d-o-m-a-i-n, the function, and then comma the variable. So here it's x. Okay, so we do need that comma x. And then there we are. So it gives us the domain here. Uh, in this case, we've sort of got this as 4n minus 3 times pi over 4. We have to compare it to these options, and they don't look exactly the same. But if we were to sub uh, a value, for example, so when n equals 0, this first one will give us negative pi on 4. Um, but that's not, this is never going to give us negative pi on 4. If we sub in n equals 0, we'll get negative 3 pi on 4. Sub in n equals 1, we would get 1 pi on 4, which is agreeing with this uh, this D option here. So it's actually equivalent to this option here. So I mean, we still have to do a little bit of thinking, but definitely the domain function makes things a fair bit easier. Uh, another example, so this was from 2018 exam 2, and it's 1 over square root of an inverse sine. Um, so again, we can use the domain function for that. Uh, 1 over square root inverse sine cx plus d c times x plus d uh, again we need the comma x and this one is kind of interesting because if we like just do it like that it's giving us all this uh, conditions for c equals 0 d between uh, 0 and 1 and if we look at the question it actually tells us c has got to be greater than 0 so if we put that information into the CAS calculator, okay, just using our um, vertical line, so control equals, given that C is greater than zero, it actually uses that to simplify it and give us um, this, which is actually, I think, quite similar to what's in the, the, the options, negative D on C to negative D. Uh, so it's option B there. Okay, so there was an example adding in an extra condition using the given, the vertical line for given. Okay, the next CAS calculator tip is going to be for partial fractions, uh, the expand function. So we often get these types of multiple choice questions which um, ask us to expand something in partial fractions and give things in terms of A, uh, B, C, etc. So um, yeah, we can just do this using the expand function. We just got to type it in, expand comma X. And then it's just a matter of comparing what we get to these options. So if we do that one, uh, expand. Two x squared plus three x plus one. On the bottom, two x plus one all cubed. Times x squared minus one. And of course, it's just crucial that you actually type it in correctly. So just double check it. If you make a mistake, uh, you're going to have a mistake. Uh, so we get, and just checking your denominator. So we've got an x minus 1, a 2x plus 1, and a 2x plus 1 squared. Already that gets us down to either option D or E. And what's the difference between options D and E? Uh, D, we've got a B on the top here, and E, we've got a BX plus C. Um, and we're told that A, B, C, D are non-zero. So because we've got a constant here, a 2, and, and not like a 2x, then we can rule out option E, and we're down to option D. Okay, so uh, that's expand, comma, x of partial fractions. Um, I thought I'd show another example, because this one, I guess, is a little bit trickier. And again, we've got a condition that B is less than zero. So we can actually use that in our CAS calculator. Expand, just copy that one down, change it. Uh, 1 over ax, so again, a times x squared plus b. And yeah, I'm going to use that information that b is less than 0. And when I do that, it actually uh, realizes that this can be factorized into x minus square root something, x plus square root something, and that something is a negative b. So comparing this to our options, well, this one has square root b, but we want square root negative b, so that's no good. This one's got a modulus, so that would be fine, because once we, um, once b is negative, so once we take the modulus, that's going to take the negative of the negative. Uh, so we're down to either option c or d, 
And what's the difference there? This one's got an AX. Well, we do have an A term, but it's actually out the front of both terms. So it's not just in front of the X. Okay, so that could be absorbed into our constant sort of big, big B here and big C. So we'll be looking at option D there. So expand comma X for partial fractions. Um, sometimes the question is in the reverse order. So um, here we've got the partial fraction form. We want to get the sort of um, the original form. We could like test these and do expand on this one, but the other way to do it is using a common denominator function. So that is under menu, algebra, fraction tools, common denominator, or you can just type com denom. And again, we should have typed this in. So one over x squared, oh, sorry, one over x plus one minus two over 2x plus 1, and just make sure to type it in correctly, 2x minus 1, uh, minus 1 over 2x minus 1 all squared. Common denominator, I don't think we'll need a common x for that one, but again, just double check you've typed it in correctly. And looking good, we've got 2 minus 7x over our denominator, so we'll be looking at um, a equals negative 7 and B is equal to 2. So common denominator for going the other way. Okay, and my last CAS calculator tip for the TI Inspire on algebra, defining Z as X plus YI. So this can be useful in a um, number of cases, but one example is where we've given um, these relations and we want to sketch it or we want to identify which relation uh, gives this graph here. So by defining z equals x plus y, I can pretty much type these in the CAS calculator and get a, a relation between x and y. So let's do that, define z equals x plus y. Now we can't just type i because it needs to be like i as in the square root of negative one. So we need to choose i from the pi menu there. And once we've done that, then we can just type in like these expressions and see what they give us. So the first one is mod uh, z plus 2 is equal to mod z plus 2i on the modular sign. z plus 2 is equal to um, mod again. z plus 2i again from over here. And what we we'll probably want to do with that to simplify it is just do a solve. Okay, so if we solve for y here, uh, we can get a simple expression as y in terms of x. Actually, in this one, y is equal to x. So, well, if we look at our graph, that's not really y equals to x, actually y is equal to negative x. So we're pretty close. So if we had a z plus 2 here, we'd probably be thinking uh, to try this one. So we can easily just go and change it to a minus 2. And bang, there we go. Y is equal to negative x. So we'd be looking at option C there. Um, yeah, just to show you like this one arg z, we can actually do that if we wanted to check that one using the angle function. So it's under the menu somewhere. I think it's algebra complex somewhere. Oh, number, complex number tools are polar angle. So it just gives us angle. We could just type angle. Um, so angle Z. Okay, because we've defined already Z as X plus Y, I, it can convert that into like an angle function or an argument. So in this case, we've got arg Z is equal to 3 pi and 4. Again, if we solve that um, for y, so we want y in terms of x, there we go, giving us y is equal to negative x and x is less than zero. Because for um, this type of function, remember, we it's going to be a ray. So we're going to have it um, undefined at an endpoint and it's going to be pointing off in one direction. So only existing when x is less than zero. So actually, this would be correct if we only had from here uh, left onwards, um, but not this bit here. So... Yeah, but just to show you how we can do arg using the uh, the angle function on the TI Inspire is quite a good one too. I'll probably do another video on, on just complex numbers on the CAS. Um, so yeah, subscribe if you want to see that one, if I have time. <laughs> okay. Hope you found those useful and have a nice day. Make sure to get to bed early, not after midnight.